Hello, fellow followers. Welcome back to Fancine. Greg here. And today I have for you New Line Cinema, a history of genre film. So the idea for the video, video basically came about, I started thinking about New Line Cinema and some of my favorite genre films that they put out uh, well before, you know, Warner Brothers gobbled them up and made them another cog in the machine because New Line Cinema uh, is not what it once was. It was it was something special back in the day, especially in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. It was something very special. And I often think back on these movies because they're some of my favorite movies. And I'm going to show off some physical media for you guys of these movies. So let's just jump right on into this. So New Line Cinema was actually founded in 1967 by Robert Shea, who was then in his 20s. Uh, you know, it, he made, it was a film in an, in an independent film distribution company because New Line Cinema was very, very much an independent film distribution company and then an independent uh, film studio much later. But uh, basically, at 27 years old, Robert Shea was running his company out of his apartment in New York uh, from distributing films uh, like John Waters films and, uh, and stuff like that. But in the year 1983, which was a big year for New Line Cinema, they actually acquired the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the movie that Rex Reed called the most horrifying motion picture I have ever seen. This film is positively ruthless in its attempt to drive you right out of your mind. Sally, I hear something. Stop. Stop. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. From New Line Cinema. Rated R. The original rights holder to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre had lost the rights, so New Line Cinema, Robert Shea and them, acquired it, picked it up, and re-released the movie in 1983, and it made them some big money. It made them some big money for this independent film distribution company, and of course, you know, we all know the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think that really helped cement its legacy was being released by New Line Cinema again in 83. It really brought back the movie to the forefront, and uh, of course, I have, I have it on 4K. Of course I do. Of course. And it's still book. So, you know, they released that in 1983. Then also in 1983, after a rave review from Stephen King, who had just saw the movie, uh, New Line Cinema actually picked up the distribution rights to the original The Evil Dead. I have seen the dark shadows moving in the woods, and I have no doubt that whatever I have resurrected is sure to come calling for me. They got up on the wrong side of the grave. Evil Dead from New Line Cinema. So frightening no one under 17 admitted. Yes, and so they released The Evil Dead uh, in the theaters in 1983. And as we all know, The Evil Dead would go on to become a huge, huge movie franchise. Uh, uh, you know, starting the career of Bruce Campbell and uh, Sam Raimi and so many others. And then uh, New Line Cinema is one of the reasons to thanks for that, because they distributed the first film. Uh, you know, so you got to give them a lot of kudos for that. And this is, you know, this is sort of where they start falling into the big genre films and everything, uh, uh, like especially independent genre films, which really, that was like, I love independent, old school independent genre type films. So of course, after the Evil Dead was released, you know, they were sort of on a bit of a role distrib distributing uh, films. But in 1984, a movie that I personally really, really love. I've talked about many, many times, uh, you know, directed by Wes Craven on a $1.8 million budget from this small independent studio, New Line Cinema. They released a movie called A Nightmare on Elm Street. One, two, three, just come from Wes Craven, the creator of Scream, comes the horror series that started it all. And after years off the shelves, all seven films return to video digitally remastered. Each edition includes the film's theatrical trailer and never-before-seen interviews with the film's director, available individually or a commemorative box set. So be sure to get the series that stars Johnny Depp, Lawrence Fishburne, Patricia Arquette, and more. I am eternal. Miss me. With the release of A Nightmare on Elm Street uh, on that $1.8 million budget, it made $57 million, thus dubbing New Line Cinema forever the house that Freddie built. And yes, I've showed this off 
many, many times here on my channel, the Nightmare on Elm Street Blu-ray collection. Uh, this contains all the original seven films, all released by New Line Cinema well into the 90s. Uh, it was just, it's just an amazing franchise, an amazing uh, series. And, you know, also with the release of the Nightmare on Elm Street series, uh, the New Line Cinema started to get into, uh, you know, TV and everything. Like they had the Nightmare on Elm Street TV series, which still desperately needs a Blu-ray release or DVD release, please. That would be awesome. But like, Freddy Krueger became a cultural pop icon, uh, expanding ever so from the movies into TV and uh, toys and all that good stuff. And that was from New Line Cinema, thanks to New Line Cinema. Of course, like I said, I've showed that off many, many times before. And so along that lines, you know, with these hits of like the Nightmare on Elm Streets and everything, uh, and after releasing these films, uh, they started looking for other genre film uh, fair in sort of that same vein. You know, they, they didn't want to sort of get pigeonholed into that, but they sort of did at times. Uh, of course, they released other movies, but also some of my other favorite movies that New Line Cinema ha happened to release uh, in the 80s, starting off in uh, 1986, Critters. Critters. The battle begins in another galaxy, but it's going to be fought in the Browns' backyard. Oh, that was great. 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 I think you should all go and see it. It was great. Bounty Hunters, total psychoticness. The Critters like to party, too. I screamed through the whole thing. Critters, see them in a theater. You don't want to run into them at home. Rated PG-13. Critters, now playing at a theater near you. Yes, they released the Critters, uh, the Critters movies in uh, 19, the first one at least in 1986. Uh, here we have the Critters box set. Uh, yes, we have that. And I'll take them all out. I'll take them out. Why not? I'll show you guys one by one. We'll start off with Critters 1. There you guys have it. Uh, I love the Krites. They're great. We have Critters 2. Uh, I love Critters 2, directed by Mick Garris. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. It's a fun flick. Fun flick. And for better or worse, I do like these, even though they're cheesy weird. And this is like with New Line Cinema going into uh, TV and stuff. These actually premiered, I believe, on, uh, I want to say Showtime, but it was probably HBO, I think. These either Showtime or HBO, exclusive movies to them at the time, Critters 3. And they were sort of shot back to back with Critters 4. There you go. And then Critters 3 was actually Leonardo DiCaprio's film debut, by the way. But there you guys have it. There's all the Critters movies. Uh, Starting in 1986 into the 90s, you got all the Critters movies that they released from New Line Cinema. And then not long after 1986 with Critters, one of my favorite movies that they uh, released came out. It wasn't a huge hit. It wasn't very big or successful for them. But it's something that I think a lot of us have sort of like maybe seen in a fever dream or something and maybe don't didn't realize we've seen it or whatever. But it's something I really love and I really enjoy. And I've covered here as well too on the channel. But My Demon Lover, starring Scott Valentine. Kaz and Denny love the same things. A successful relationship takes work. Moonlight drives. I just remembered I have a very important appointment. <laughs> Romantic hideaways. <laughs> and all kinds of surprises. Could I uh, buy you a drink? Scott Valentine is My Demon Lover. You look really awful. A monstrously funny comedy. Did I do something? You have to get help for this. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday at a theater near you. This was supposed to be Scott Valentine's big movie debut after Family Ties. Sadly, it did not do as well as they were hoping it would do. It just didn't, sadly. But this is something I really, really love. It's got that old school New Line Cinema feel to it. There's just something special about it. It's this weird... Uh, blending of genres from horror movie to romantic comedy to uh, gore effects. It's just insane. This movie has got to be seen to be believed. Like I said, some of you probably remember seeing this late night on cable or something or didn't even realize this movie was real. I absolutely love this movie. And like, like I said, there was just something special about those old school New Line Cinema movies, especially in the 80s and 90s. Just, there's, a, there's a feel to them that are just absolutely amazing absolutely amazing uh but i absolutely love my demon lover great movie if you've not seen it i do recommend it and then moving on into the 90s speaking which speaking of around like 1990 new line had another huge hit movie come out uh you know up until this point like freddie was still like their biggest hit and everything but in 1990 something huge came out for them and that would have been teenage mutant ninja turtle Turtlemania is sweeping the nation. The movie is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. I would bring my kids to see this movie ten times. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was great. Rated PG. 
Now playing. I remember seeing the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie in the theaters. But when I went to the theater, the theater was literally lined up all the way back into the parking lot. The people were waiting in to get to see the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. And this movie still holds up today. I'm still waiting on a 4K for that, but this is all three of them. Eventually, they did release Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, which some people don't like. Uh, I get it. It's it's best, definitely the weakest of the trilogy. But the first two movies did a huge bank for New Line Cinema. Uh, you know, it, it catapulted the turtles into the next level of the mainstream, from the comics to the cartoon to the movie. And like I said, I just re I remember loving it. I was like one of those people after seeing the first teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I was like, holy crap, this movie is freaking awesome! Absolutely loved it. And once again, it has that New Line Cinema feel to it. The first two movies, even the third movie, there's something special about the way the New Line Cinema movies felt. The genre films and everything that they made, there's something very, very special about the way they felt. And uh, they just got on a roll uh, with the Ninja Turtles, and it was awesome, you know, in, well into the 90s. And then in 1994, uh, the Turner Broadcasting uh, System, Ted Turner, basically bought New Line Cinema. You know, he bought up New Line Cinema, and uh, uh, unlike some of the other, uh, you know, film studios and distribution companies that he bought, like the Hanna Barbera and everything, um, New Line Cine Cinema was left to operate as its own. It didn't become a bigger part of the, uh, the you know, the Turner Broadcast uh, services and everything. You know, uh, they were left to still operate as their own entity, uh, you know, just with a little bit of money from Ted Turner, which really helped them in in, in the thing. Uh, but within going into the 90s after that with being part of the Turner Broadcasting System, it came back to a familiar fan franchise that uh, they tried to revive, and that would be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Leatherface. Some tales are told, then soon forgotten, but a legend is forever. Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, rated R. The most controversial horror film ever starts Friday, January 12th. Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, is one of those movies that you, you either love it or you hate it. It's a very controversial movie. It's a, one of, you know, they tried to sort of mainstream the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it doesn't really quite work mainstream. And this movie is, uh, you know, it's been edited so much. There's so much still cut out of this movie. Even with this, even with this Warner Archive Collector's Blu-ray here that I have, it does have some of the stuff that was deleted out of it, put back into it. But it's still not the full-on uh, director's version and the original shot version of the film. It's been massively edited. I mean, it's, this is a movie you love it or hate it. I actually enjoy the movie. I don't think it's that bad. It's definitely not the greatest of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. I think the first two are really good. Um, but it's just something about it. And once again, it still has that uh, New Line Cinema film. I also want to mention, like, with these New Line Cinema movies, even like with the Ninja Turtles or My Demon Lover or the Freddy movies or whatnot, they all feel like they can inhabit the same world. They all feel like, you know, this version of Leatherface in this world could match up with uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street could even be a part of the Ninja Turtles movie. Heck, even the House Party movies, which I'm not bringing up in this video because, but New Line Cinema did do the House Party movies, which were actually big movies for them. I'm sort of sticking to like genre type sci-fi horror stuff like this. Uh, but, you know, like even in the House Party movies could feel like they fit into Leatherface world. There's just something special about the New Line Cinema world and of, of movies. But, uh, you know, they tried with Leatherface didn't quite succeed, you know, it, it kind of came in and went, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the greatest for them. And then later on, uh, down the line into the 90s, they acquired another horror movie icon, and uh, uh, along with Sean S. Cunningham and Adam Marcus, they brought us Jason Goes to Hell. Horror has many faces. But pure evil wears only one. And this is your final chance to see it. Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. Rated R. Starts Friday, August 13th at a theater near you. Now I know what you're thinking. Jason Goes to Hell sucks. 
Well, I'm one of the few people that actually likes Jason Goes to Hell. Uh, yes, it does it have its faults? It does. But after talking with Adam Marcus here on my channel, actually, I've come to appreciate the movie a little better. And knowing some of the stuff behind it, I, I, I get it. And plus, to me, it sort of felt like it was trying, trying to set up the world that I was just talking about with Leatherface and Freddy and everything. And I think we all remember at the end of the movie, Freddy's hand coming out of the ground and pulling Jason's mask under. And that's really excited us all. Yes, this movie is not the best of the Friday the 13th movies. A lot of people really, really hate this movie. Uh, but New Line Cinema, you know, they try to, you know, bring Jason into the 90s uh, and maybe bring along Freddy with them as well. Uh, love it or hate it. I understand people that hate it. I'm not going to, you know, whatever. You hate it, you hate it. Uh, but I kind of like the movie. I do. I do like the movie. I do. Uh, but it did, sadly... Um, you know, it did succeed, but it was, it's not one of those well liked movies, uh, by everybody. I get it though. I get it. And then moving on from Jason goes to hell, uh, not long after that, you know, as the Freddy versus Jason movie languished for years, uh, they decided to do another Jason movie and that would be Jason X. 400 years in the future. He's here. That's Jason Voorhees. Evil. It's okay. He just wanted his machete back. Gets an upgrade. You guys might want to run. Jason X Rated R coming soon. Jason X is just an absolutely fun, horrible movie. Eventually, every every horror icon goes into space. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think we've got Freddy in space yet, but you never know. Uh, I I love Jason goes to, uh, Jason X. Jason goes to space. I was about to say I do. I love it. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so cheesy. It's so over, over the top. Kane Hodder is still amazing as awesome, uh, as amazing as ever as Jason. Uber Jason is just insane. Uh, it's got a, some really great scenes in it. Uh, it's just over the top. It's goofy. It's one of those goofy bad movies that's fun to watch. It's just fun to watch. I love Jason Goes to Action, which was also released by New Line Cinema. Uh, you know, and me, me, it just was. It's just what it was. It succeeded in some ways. In some ways, it didn't. It wasn't. I don't think it was a huge. I don't think it was a real box office success success but they released jason jason x uh and then not long after that you know down the line we eventually did get freddy versus jason the only thing to fear is fear himself 23 years <laughs> 3,000 lives now he may get the blood, but I will get the glory. The legends will meet. Now to Freddy. Freddy vs. Jason, winner kills all. Rated R. And this is another one of those contentious movie amongst fans. I actually like the movie. I think it's fun. And I think some of the reasons why I like some of these movies that some people don't like like this is uh, seeing all the movies we get today and looking back on movies like this, you go, hey, maybe these movies weren't so bad compared to what we got today. And I mean, you can't go wrong with Robert England as coming back as Freddy versus Jason. It should have been Kane Hodder. It should have been Kane Hodder as Jason. Sadly, that did not happen. But this movie is fun. It's just a fun watch. It's got that great 2000s like uh, soundtrack to it, you know, that rock metal soundtrack. Uh, Freddy, you know, is awesome in this movie. Jason is a little, it's one of the worst versions of Jason's, but it's a fun movie. It's got some hot chicks in it. It's got the classic uh, horror movie tropes. I think it pays homage well it's got a great fight i actually enjoy the movie i think it's a fun movie and once again it does have that new line cinema feel but by this point in time um time warner 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 brothers has purchased new line cinema and they were still sort of independently operating but within the warner brothers studio system and then finally we'll come to the final genre films uh from new line cinema which i think this is really where i think this is really where new line cinema uh, from what I love and the feeling I get from them really truly ends. And that would be with the all time classic trilogy, the Lord of the Rings. Peter Jackson pitched uh, basically the Lord of the Rings, what they want to do to Robert Shea. Uh, and it, thus it happened. It was deemed that they didn't know how they were going to do it. They didn't know the budget. They got it. And this was probably the most successful uh, movie trilogy of all time, especially for New Line Cinema. Uh, you know, it made them bank money and i love the fact that uh you know um peter jackson when he made these he decided to uh, you know stick to as 
Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, as best he could with this, without and in, in, you know, without influencing these movies with his modern day sensibilities and politics. This is what we can't say for a lot of the movies we get today. <coughs> rings of Power, Rings of Power. Oh, excuse me. Uh, rings of Power sucks. Um, uh, so excuse me. But the Lord of the Rings trilogy came out, and man, they are amazing. Some of the probably, if not the best trilogy of all time. Some of the best movies ever made. Uh, great characters. I, I'll show this off a little bit. Uh, this is not the full K, but this is the extended editions. Um, personally, I'm fine with this. I know the 4Ks are out there, but I've also heard that the 4Ks are a little bit of a little bit of a uh, you know mess, a little bit here and there. Uh, so some of the stuff's been smudged, DNR'd, and everything. And these are uh, different scans than those, and these are probably some of the better scans. But uh, you know, I'll show off this a little bit. I'm fine with this Blu-ray set I have here, uh, the extended editions. Uh, you know, this is one of the all-time my fa all-time favorite sets. I'll take it out, and you know, I'll, I'll set that here. We'll go through one at a time here. The movies one at a time. We got, of course, we have. Um, let's get it here. Of course, we have. The Fellowship of the Ring Extended Edition. Uh, I love the, I love these cases and these gold artworks here and everything. And they all come with a little booklet on the inside and, you know, multiple disc with all the special features. Some of the most comprehensive special features of all time. Uh, it's amazing, amazing detail, amazing work. Uh, you just don't get productions like this anymore. You know, and from sort of a basically at this point in time, even though Warner Brothers owned them, still sort of an independent studio. Still sort of an independent studio run by Robert Shea. And so, you know, uh, and he did a really great job. And Peter Jackson just absolutely killed it with these movies. Absolutely killed it with these movies. I love it. Look at the two towers. We got all the movies, all the special features and everything, the extended editions. I mean, after you see the extended editions, you'll never go back to the theatrical versions. And, of course, we have Return of the King. I mean, come on. Come on. It's amazing, amazing trilogy. You cannot go wrong with this trilogy. This trilogy is absolutely set. And, and if you can get your hands on this box set, I would. I mean, if, if the 4Ks are fine if you want to go to the 4K. Uh, but if you want to get your hands on this box set, go ahead and get your hands on this box set. This is an amazing box set. I absolutely love it. I don't. Uh, it might be a little more expensive now for you guys than what it was when I paid for it. But I absolutely love this. And this, to me, is sort of where – this is where New Line Cinema – as I know it and how I, I think back on it ends. This is where New Line Cinema ends for me. Um, but there you guys have it. The history of genre film within New Line Cinema uh, from the house that Freddie built to uh, the Lord of the Rings, uh, the most successful film franchise, one of the most successful film franchises of all times. And then uh, sadly, uh, New Line Cinema has been gobbled up by Warner Brothers. And it's just not New Line Cinema anymore. They do use the name here and there. But it's it's not New Line Cinema. It's not New Line Cinema. They made so many great movies uh, through the years. Surf Ninjas, like you know, I didn't mention them, but Surf Ninjas is an amazing movie. Uh, you know, the House Party movies they made. They made Suburban Commando with Hulk Hogan and Christopher Lloyd. I love that movie. Uh, you know, they've made so many other movies through the years. But I just I wanted to show off some like the horror genre and like the Ninja Turtles and Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. The horror genre, fantasy, sci-fi stuff like that. Because I think that's really where they took off. Yes, the house party movies can be thrown in there, but that's, I, I wouldn't say they're like the genre films I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, I just miss the golden age of New Line Cinema when it was Robert Shea, Michael DeLuca, just running and making awesome movies. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about this video and some of your all-time favorite New Line Cinema movies in the comment section down below. And if you liked what you saw here, maybe consider hitting that like button or subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications. That would be awesome if I earn your guys' subscriptions or possibly join and become a channel member because that would help out my channel immensely. Thank you and shout out to all my channel members. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys for being channel members here and for all of your support. And to everybody watching, whether you liked me, hated me, or liked the video, or hated this video, I thank you for sticking this long. Wherever you all are, please have a great, safe, happy, healthy day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Always support physical media. It truly is the superior format. Godspeed.